Okay, first item on our agenda, and because we don't have any public to make a comment, is approval of last meeting's minutes. Um, Terry, I just note that um, where you have vote counts, it says yes, six, and no, zero. There are actually only five commissioners um, present that day. Jay was absent, and if you can mark Andrew as... Yes, I caught that after the fact. Okay, so I all right, was that. Jay absent? Jay was here. Oh, okay, okay. The time before. Oh. Oh, okay, got it. All right, then there were six of us. Hi, Mara. Okay, so that's the only thing. Um, and then the only other thing is, I think the word, uh, second page, under Felix Lufkin, second bullet, fourth line, collaborative spirit, instead of spirit. Oh, oh, Sprit. Wow. Sprit. Wow. Sprit. Wow. Sprit. Sprit and get rid of it. Wow. <laughs> All right, that's otherwise. Yeah. Otherwise, that's, that's right. right. It is. Yeah. Thank you. So the votes are okay then? Yep, the votes are okay then. All right. We need a motion after you all. Motion to approve as amended. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, minutes approved. been a part is that Rich, Todd, a man named Joel Russell, who I've described before as a um, resident who's also an urban planner, and myself visited with the mayor and Wayne Clyden in this room um, about two weeks ago now. Uh, and I sent you basically a synopsis of the case we made to them. So did everyone get a copy of this? I couldn't find that. All right. Um, you can borrow mine, but I'd like it back. Okay. Can you make copies? I'm sure I can. I think I asked Terry not to make copies of stuff like that because it just didn't. It just seemed like too much. Paper. I I agree, but I don't make one for myself. Okay. Um, and I I I'd love to hear how others thought the meeting went. I thought the meeting went well. I thought that we came very well prepared with a really clear request and um, some good documentation for why we were making that request. Um, I felt like we were pretty well received. I didn't feel any defensiveness, especially from the mayor, and that felt great. Um, I think there was a little bit of pushback from Wayne because he feels that trees need to be weighed against all these other um, aspects of, of design and that, that all voices should sort of come together at the table, which I don't disagree with. We just want a place at the table. And we want it early. Um, so then the question is, like, how early is early? And um, I, I, you know, I think that early to us is as early as possible. And um, so there were some good outcomes in the meeting. And Todd, Todd, I'd like to give you a chance to chime in too. But one of the one of the outcomes was an invitation for a representative from the Tree Commission to be on the Bike Ped Subcommittee of the Transportation and Parking Commission which makes a whole lot of sense to me. Um, the other was that Wayne did forward us uh, at least a, you know, a bulleted list of stuff that's happening right now in the city that could impact um, public street trees. Um, was it, did you have that list of bulleted things that, did you mean that, did you? I think, I, I think it was in the body. If you oh, go back to that email, right. yeah. Okay. I didn't print out the email. Right. right, right, okay. I knew I thought I thought it was. And then the other thing was that, you know, the mo there's a number of things that are right in front of the city's headlights right now. And one of them is the city is undergoing a, um, an updating of its comprehensive bike ped plan. And it's actually hired uh, an outside firm to facilitate that process. And one of the one of the things they're doing is holding a, a number of public forums. One of them is coming up, and it's a very important one, I think, for us to be there. 
on March 7th, which is next Monday, Monday at 6.30 p.m. At the, at the Senior Center. Todd, you're definitely going to go to that. Um, Joel Russell is going to try to, but he has a conflict. It was the beginning part. I cannot be there. I'm going to be out of town. Um, I just can't emphasize enough to the folks around this table how much us speaking up, you know, making um, clear, data-driven um, arguments in favor of uh, street trees and in a public fashion, in a way that, um, that gets recorded how, how important that is for it actually, for, for design, for the planning, the way planning is done to, to change. So I, um, can I just have a quick show of hands of people who think that they could come to this meeting and would be prepared to actually say something? I think that us coming to the meeting isn't quite enough, but I think that if we're prepared to emphasize that um, we think that you know street trees are an integral part of street design and we want to see them in every future redesign or new design of the trees. I have to double check, but I'm pretty sure I would. I'd be happy to speak. I, I probably would want to um, get some assistance yeah. in the uh, talking point. Sure. This, this, this is a big help right here. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is that that firm, Alta, is the name of the firm, and it is a nationally respected um, firm, especially when it comes to installing what's considered more typical bike ped infrastructure in towns, like bike share programs that helps take off. Um, get taken off in, in various um, municipalities. Um, I've also asked if Alta could come to a future uh, meeting of the Shade Tree Commission. And so I wanted to bring that to you guys first, see if that's something that you'd be um, in favor of. I, 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 you know, they're, um, they're going to be speaking directly to the bike ped subcommittee. I know that they're going to their next meeting, um, but if we can get them to come to our table too, I think that it would just multiply that impact by seven times. So, um, if you like that idea, I can pursue that with, with Wayne. So, Jen thinks she can come. Anybody else interested in coming? I'll be there. Great. I'll, I'll try to be there. I think I can. Put it in my book. Okay. I'll let you know for sure. I meant to bring my calendar and I left it in my truck. Okay. Um, Todd, did you like to say anything about that meeting? No, I think you summarized it well. I, I share your optimism, and, and I think it's just important to note that um, while we had talked about this before as a, as a commission, definitely, you know, this is moving forward from the city's uh, standpoint. So the bike pet plan is happening, and that will have you know, various uh, implications around some of the work that we're doing. So this is definitely being driven forward by the city, mostly because of grant-funded opportunities um, that uh, Wayne is obviously rightfully going after and collecting for the city. So between this and the Healthy Cities Initiative and some other things, this is going to be driving that forward. So having public shade trees at the table and part of the design process is, is definitely the, the way to go because it's being moved forward by the city. Yeah. Um, Recognize that having trees promotes pedestrian traffic before we came to, or you came to the table? Is that something that they had on in mind? I, I, I don't think it's on their radar. I spoke to um, James Lowenthal, who for years um, was on the bike ped sub, you know, subcommittee of the Transportation and Parking Commission. A really well respected member of our community, very um, you know, sustainability minded. And for example, when North Street was redesigned, he said trees were not on our radar. So I think that it really is going to take us, you know, to, to have a seat at least at the bike ped um, subcommittee and then, you know, hear forward just whenever any of these issues are coming up. We got we to gotta just reinforce that concept. It can become part of the city's culture. I don't think it is right now. And maybe, you know, Rich can, or at least it hasn't been up to. But they have a professional planning group that's advising Yep, and if you look at the proposal they sent, um, they very they they mentioned shade trees one time in a very cursory way. Yeah, they just got hired. Like, they got hired in fall, yeah. Yeah. 
they have a long standing relationship with the city. Yeah, because they're helping with the bike share program to get off the ground. They did the consulting work for that, so. A L T A. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you go online at the, um, you know, you look at files in the planning department, you can pull up their proposal, you can search for the word trees, and you can see that it's um, mentioned once in a caption of a photograph that says, like, future design could include trees. <laughs> so what is the best, is it possible for, for, what, for us to engage them directly, aside that's, from going to the meeting? Or? Them coming to our meeting. Right. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm suggesting. And that was our request to the mayor and, and Wayne was for, not only for, you know, it was important for us to say, as members of the public, you know, we're fine as individuals to go to these things and speak as a member of the public. But as a shade tree commission, as appointed by the mayor to do X, Y, and Z, right. we want to have an active role as a commission uh -huh. during the process. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, you know, Tom, Dick, and Harry as members yeah. of the public. It is an active right. procedural presence. Right. 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 Well, that's great that they will then come. I mean, presumably they'll come. Yeah, we'll see. There, you know, it would have to line up with when they're going to come to Northampton already. So it may have to be an ad hoc meeting. And if we can't get a quorum, I did ask the mayor and uh, representatives of our commission can still can still meet with them. We don't have to have uh, you know an open meeting. Uh, we could just send a couple of us to meet with them, and that would be okay too. Which is better than nothing. Just a question: Could, Can we assist the city and? Uh, garnering interest for this public workshop by inviting some of our people who have provided their emails to us for volunteer activities to come? <laughs> um, I, I absolutely think we should promote this meeting and we should encourage tree advocates to come to the meeting. Absolutely. I. Um, Which meeting? The, the one on March 7th. March 7th. So this yeah. is the public, the public forum. Meeting. It's a public yeah. meeting. It's a public meeting. Yeah, so we can, there, there's no conflict there. We absolutely can invite anyone to come. And I will. I will be. Um, let me put that on my to-do list. Actually, can you, you do you have the list of volunteers. That I have my own list. You know, okay. even before the commission got, was put uh, together, I just started amassing a large list. Are you talking about from the survey? Uh, I was just. Th I, I was just thinking who would send out the email. It's That's a group. It's on a Google Doc. Right? Um. I mean, I, I was. Yeah. Working on a Google Doc. You mean of the e emails and phone numbers? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I assume you're you're on the other end. Yeah, we, we all would have yeah, access yeah, to it. Access right. Right. Uh, the the problem is with the Google Doc is you have to uh, pick all the addresses and emails off of it. Right. But I have an e email that has well, you know. Right. 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 Has them, so I can yeah. just forward that to you and then. Sure. Or you probably you may even. You're talking about it. the people who actively volunteered in the fall. You know, so they've already got that investment. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I have one for the people who volunteered, and I have one for the people who said they would volunteer, but we didn't have a use for them because it was we didn't get to the survey until after the season. Okay. So that's about list of about fifty each. I mean, Rich, you don't see any conflict with that, do you? With us sending an email to say, you know, I think the list sir. Right, saying you know we think that uh, you know. The topic of shade trees is an important one to have during this public forum. If you can make it to the public forum and say something on behalf of the importance of public shade trees, we'd love for you to come. That's not in any way in a. As long as it doesn't come from all seven of you. Yeah. Okay. Or so all that four of you at the same time, it's fine. Okay. Because once you possible to create a public shade tree commission email, um, because. I'm just imagining if any one of us sends out an email to those who expressed interest in volunteering, which is dozens of people, um, it would obviously be good for people to be responsive, but that could be a lot for one person's inbox. So I was just wondering if it's possible to create an email that any of us at any time or perhaps on our rotating schedule could check in and maintain. Well, okay, I feel like that's maybe a topic for, uh, you know, another discussion, but just in terms of this meeting coming up on the 7th. Well, it was regarding that, because I was thinking if, if we wanted to notify people of it or encourage their participation, how would we send it? And, um, I was just thinking it would be useful. Blind CC? Well, Rich just mm -hmm. said, 
But yeah. you said that it was better if it came from an individual rather than from the commission. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. Uh, yeah, it can't come from the commission. It can't. Yeah. Yeah, so that would be yeah, a Especially this. That's one of the reasons why we decided to list everyone's emails or contact information separately. So if you wanted to contact the chairperson, yeah. All right. contact me. But I think it would be best in this instance to come from one person. Okay. So if you want to email all those folks on that list you have, it should come from one of you. Because once you include three other people in the conversation, then it's, then it's you know. Yeah, and I would do a blind CC so that nobody, but, but actually probably what I do, because this is my tact having organized for years is that e-blasts are just really ineffective. Um, it's only when you tailor personal emails do people actually bother to read them. So I would probably take the time to cherry pick 20 people from the list who I, I could pretty much say if they could come, they would come. If they knew about it and send them personal emails. I, I can confirm that the lists that I'm using don't. The e what what you last have done have not had yeah, um, right. much effect at all. Okay, so I'm happy to do that if um, you know if there's no objection. Um, so you, you might just go then to the when we talk about to that list and it's you have in Google. Uh, right, I'll have to pull that up. Okay, great. Um, and again, I just encourage as many people around this table to come to that meeting on um, next Monday at 6.30 at the Senior Center. Okay, the last thing in my chair report is just, uh, I, I've already mentioned it, and I think I, I left a little time for us to discuss, discuss it in the body of the um, meeting, which is that we do have the opportunity to send one of us to the Bike, Pedestrian, and Subcommittee of the Transportation and Parking Commission. Um, this is not actually a voting body that, you know, has a chair and, and it's, it's a subcommittee. And so it, as a subcommittee, it operates a little differently. Um, it doesn't have a chair. Wayne sets the agenda and takes the minutes and circulates the minutes. Um, and it's, I, I don't know how many members, if any, from that subcommittee actually sit on the Transportation Parking Commission as well. But I do know that they have been powerful in the past. They drafted the entire bike pedestrian plan for the city in the past, and the Transportation and Parking Commission only reviewed it and gave it their thumbs up and did not make substantive changes. This is, again, per my conversation with James Leventhal, who sat on that committee for many years and has just come off it. Um, so I do think that it, we, we could have some impact on that. All right, so that's it for the chair report. I don't want to go into that conversation until it's on the agenda. Oh, the last thing I'll just say really quickly is I just got a last minute um, email from Pat James, who was supposed to come and talk to us at 430, to say that she's feeling very sick and couldn't make it. She liked to reschedule. So we have, um, we've just materialized 20 minutes <laughs> on our agenda that I'm sure we'll fill up with other things. Uh, let's see, so did you want to talk about the, you're going to leave the Arbor Day information that you got for the packet, the ash tagging? Yep. You're going to leave that for the Arbor Day conversation? Yeah, sure. Okay. So I, uh, the Schichtel's airwood stock has been ordered. Hopefully we'll see that sometime in the end of March, beginning of April. Depends upon what other orders are being filled around here because they're all kind of stuck together. Pleasant Street review, I did. I do have a full set of plans for Pleasant Street, actually a three by five set that's in the engineering department. Um, and I'm in the process of reviewing uh, their proposed tree plantings. But it's very, the concentration of tree plants on Pleasant Street, which I don't have anything to show you, is really basically at the end by uh, Mockham Road. There are very few tree wells, new tree wells being put between Mockham Road and Loyola Street. Road? Hawking up road where the wastewater treatment plant is. And I've also it's got across the street from the wellness center, the, the Barry Elson's uh, allergy place. Near, near across from like public health. Oh really? Mm -hmm. I've got I've got this topic of Pleasant Street desi uh, design on the agenda so we can we can go into it. I'd like to actually because you know that that actually doesn't sit really well with me. I have a quick question just about the uh, bare root stock. Um, I understand like the order, like we don't know the date. Is there a ballpark, like how much lead time are we going to know? A week or 
Yeah. You know, I'm so just thinking. I, I, to, I, would, I would say probably a couple of weeks. Okay, from an organizational yeah. point of view. Okay. Yeah, I can I can contact Jim when the time gets closer. One more thing about that, Rich. Yes. Um, everything I learned, they said that, that the order would come late April, like third week. It's going to come like it's going. It depends, I think, though, because I don't. I don't. He doesn't know how many orders he has for here yeah. for this area. So my best guess would be like mid April. Okay. But it could be anywhere from the end of March, beginning of April. I'm hoping it's latter. Yeah. Towards because I don't want the stock to dry out. Well, they, well, they have to, to take the trees out of the ground while they're dormant. Correct. So, but the ground can't be frozen, so they don't have total control of when it happens. No. And this year, right now. I'm thinking it might fall off any time now, right? This would be a drastic change. Well, next week it's going to be in the 60s for three days, so. Right. So. It'll take care of a lot of. Uh, in Buffalo? In Buffalo? No. We're not sure in Buffalo. Buffalo. No, but it's in, like in the 40s and or in low 50s. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, so they may have to take them out earlier than they, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's just when we get down to the conversation about Arbor Day, because I think our, our idea was to have some of those bare root trees be planted by kids. Correct. And so we're just going to have to have a plan for healing them. That's correct. Well, if, if the other option is if we have to, the bare root trees show up much earlier than the end of April, we have to put them all on the ground. We, can, we could um, get some nursery stock that we have from Amherst Nursery right. and utilize those in the schools. So, backup. As the backup. The bare root stock would be right. obviously the best because it's a hand. Like, and it's a little more educational, I think. Than, I mean, it's educational planting a tree um, and a grow bag, but I think uh, bear would be better. Uh, yeah. um, I got an email from Lance Wade from National Grid. They're going to be uh, this year, their circuit trimming is going to be um, in Florence starting in, uh, started in February. Uh, so basically all of Florence, Ryan Road, Acrebrook Drive, Burt's Pit, Sylvester, West Farms, Turkey Hill, <coughs> Glendale Road, Route 66, West Hampton Town Line, and Cardinal Way, Nonatuck Street, Bliss and Willow, Riverside Drive, Maple Street, Middle Street, North Maple, Bike Path from Oak Street to Chestnut. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's different. Um, Lake Street, Oak Street, North Farms Road, and the streets off of it, and Bridge Road from Wolf Park to Mountain Street. So Rich, most of those are larger roads that I recognize the name of. Yeah. Does, does, when they say that, do they mean also the roads off of those roads? Um, no, they will actually identify, for example, uh, he says North Farms Road and streets off of it, which is uh, Country right. Way and uh, Russellwood Ridge. Well, what about all the other streets that are off of all? They just don't do them at all? No, they, they'll do them, but they're not on this particular circuit. I see, so circuit. another circuit. They're not on this, cir this, this particular circuit for Rich, would it be who lost to, you know, I to have you do sort of some spot checks? I have in the past. You have? Yeah, I, I do. So I'll okay. It's resulted in a couple of issues between myself and Lance. Yeah. Where there were some trees that were and they were just hacked. Yeah. And I made them come back and prune them properly. But unfortunately, the damage was already done. So yeah. instead of doing the pruning cuts at the proper length, they, they had to go back in the tree and reach mm -hmm. more, you know, farther in to actually prune properly. Yeah. So now, you know, the body of the tree was started to be really misshapen. But, you know, it's just an utility conflict. But they're, they're pretty good, although I have to say, I think that some of the companies they have, I, I think some of the folks who work for them are trained well, but I think others are not trained so well. So you may have a line foreman that's running, you know, a couple of crews, and he is trained well, plus maybe someone else on the crew, but not every uh, person is actually running the truck and doing the training is not really trained in proper pruning cuts. And it's production. It's like production work. Yeah. So, so would it be yeah. a good use of your time to, at the very get-go, meet every whatever subcontractor who is doing the trimming and just say, hey, I want to introduce myself. You know, we're, we're just trying to take better notice. And just put them on, just put them on yeah. notice in a friendly kind of way. I typically usually meet with Lance. I we'll actually have Lance come out to the field to meet with him and the contractor because the John, the contractor works for National Grid actually works for him. So it's a little more, a little more muscle for me. Just, yeah. you know, I can just turn my back and then they're you know, chopping stuff up like nobody's business. Mm -hmm. so, 
Do you have a start date for that? Um, he didn't give me an exact date. He said it was in, uh, and I have not seen it when it was in the end of February. So I can actually email him back and get a, I haven't seen anybody in town anywhere, I believe. So end of February would have been just, just started. Yes, so okay. I, but like I said, I haven't seen anybody. So. They usually park up at the, at the uh, uh, Pro Brush Lodge. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Florence there. Do you know where their subcontractor is? Uh, Louis. Louis Prost. Okay. Jay, do you feel like there's anything else we should be doing? Or? I think I think that idea of meeting with Lance and the crew is a good idea. Just so they know right off the bat that somebody's watching. Okay, great. And I can keep an eye out too. Yeah, that's fine. If I see him, I'll let you know. Um, and I haven't heard anything from uh, TCR about the treatment. That's still unofficially up in the air, or officially up in the air, I should say. I talked to Molly about that, just because I want to know like, what the funding constraints would be on our end. And she said that it is, the decision is going to be made at some point in the near future, but it, it would be for the 26th, for this June 30th fiscal year that's going to close out soon. But they could extend it to December and potentially to next June, if, say for example, it's awarded May 15th of 20, 2016 with the June 30th expiration date, that because they're so tied up on projects from 2014 to 2015, that they would work with us on the extension. If, if, because I was like, oh boy, you know, six weeks to get a project done, and she's like, oh, well, we can get that extended. What is the plan for that? I mean, say you hear the end of April, Maybe it won't be that long, but just say, or, and then the fiscal year ends. How does that affect? Can you just review how that affects us? Rich? Mm -hmm. um, if we if we are awarded the grant um, at the end of April, then I need to put together an RFP. Right. And then we need to ask them for an extension because it's it, it depends. It depends how they grant us. It depends how they grant us the grant. Okay. Give us the grant. So. Uh -huh. Because there's two things I need to make put the RFP together, which has basically been already written by other communities, which we can utilize, uh, and then I would have to make sure that the, the funding source is secured, because we have to pay for the whole thing up front. She was saying she didn't care where the for our match. They don't care which fiscal year it comes from. It's not like 2016 monies have to be matched with 2016 monies. Mm -hmm. So if we're on our next fiscal year paying for the 2016 state fiscal year, that's okay. Even if it's extended, so we won't be able to do the work within the fiscal year that the grants can be awarded within, which is not that big of a deal on there and provide that they can give us an extension. And it doesn't matter to them if we're using next year's budget for a match. So. We are using next year's money, right? Because we spent this year. No, we still have uh, 30, we got 35,000. Well, we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. for, for this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. So what I think what's going to happen is we're not going to get the award until it's too late to hire a company. Yeah. So that means that there's going to be 35 from 2016 plus the rollover from the following fiscal year. If I can have an RFP in place and there's a contract draft that I can get the order to a company place for this fiscal year we're in. Which leaves a big... So that would give us more money. That would give us more money, but the other option is to use tailings from the department's general fund to pay for the whole. The, the, the problem is, is that you're not going to get a bill until next fiscal year, and that's the issue because it's next fiscal year, you can't pay from this fiscal year unless you have money encumbered as a, a contract that's being in the process. So, so it so, sounds like you have a handle on Yeah, the best thing to do would be to know, like, in April, because then it would give us at least two and a half months to to get it all put together. And if the actual um, treatment tour doesn't start to happen until sometime during the summer months, which was the timetable that we laid out in the grant, then we would have the ability to encumber monies from a couple different places to pay for the whole thing. So we can actually roll that money over, let's say 72,000, roll it all over. And then uh, when we go to pay for it, we pay for it, we submit our um, documentation to DCR and they give us our money back. And that will give us $30,000 if that's what they give us. Plus, 
the forty thousand dollars from next fiscal year, so we'll have seventy thousand dollars monthly in twenty seventeen. Correct for work. Correct. <coughs> which, which is a lot of work. It is a lot of work, but it all it all depends on the timing. Yeah. Tom. Can we put on the agenda for next time to review the RFP? Oh, yeah. Have you started? Have you drafted that? No, I don't. I have uh, the only well, the only RFP I have is one that was uh, put together by Amherst and Joe Cook. I need to talk to Joe Cook. He explained to me that he doesn't feel that we actually need to go out to bid for it. We can actually just solicit bids, even though it's over the thirty-five thousand dollar mark, which is. Because of the nature of the type of work, for some particular reason. Okay. It must be something he knows. So he's got something up his sleeve. I have no idea. I Joe think what Todd is getting at is that we just yes. have it all lined up yep. so that when no, it, you know, we get the award. So is that something you feel like you can I do? don't know the answer to that question. I'm working on a whole bunch of different things, so sure. I can try. Okay. Um, but I guess the take home message is that when we get our award with only a few weeks left in the fiscal year, there's not like a big. We have flexibility. There is flexibility. It's not an emergency. Okay. But we might end up with a lot more money than we expect to have if it's all set up. And if, Rich, just to start the conversation, maybe not the whole RFP and all the 30B mumbo jumbo, but just the scope. Okay. Well, the scope actually is really we specify, we specify the scope in the, in the application, so we can just take that and migrate that into the RFP with the other appropriate language that needs to go with the RFP. Okay. But yes. So it's like I'd like to take a look, yeah, a relook at that. Yep. Anything else on tree warden report? Uh, no. Um, I apologize for not bringing the Pleasant Street design with me. I can actually walk with Mike's office. If you want. I think I yeah, I think that would be helpful when we get down to that topic. I really think it would be great to have the visual in front of us. Thanks. Okay. okay. All right, as I said, Pat James couldn't make it today, but I will try to reschedule her. Um, and, you know, just in terms of future visitors, so I am going to invite Alta to come to one of our, um, to hopefully come to a future meeting, and if they can't make it, then to schedule um, a meeting with them. Is there anyone here who would like to um, be part of a meeting if we can't have Alta come to us, be part of a, a meeting with them? Jay Todd. Okay, I would like to too. Can they send us a questionnaire? Because I don't anticipate going to special meetings, but I would like us to have equal opportunity to answer questions. Um, what do you mean by questionnaire? Oh, you know, a way for people who can't go to meetings because they're working. So I just want to like, like maybe a few stuff questions for us to Oh, I see. Re regarding trees, specifically regarding trees? Yes, re regarding what you would anticipate us being able to provide insight to them on. Would you like to generate some of those questions? Sure, I'd love to. Okay, great. No, wait, we, uh, wait, I'm a little confused. What questions we would ask well, or, or? Like I see it, they're consultants. It's their job to do reach out to boards and commissions and committees. Yeah. And yeah. as a member of the board and commission committee, I'd like to have the opportunity to provide feedback. And of I course. don't want to take time out of work to provide feedback. Yep, yep. So I think it's not too hard for them as somebody's getting paid money to do this work to reach out to us in a format that's convenient for us. To yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't really feel like it's coming upon me. They should do work. work. Well, here's the well, it's their, but it's their, they're going to do what their scope is. Yeah. And their scope it's is dictated by the planning department. And so they're going to, you know, Wayne's their master. So they're going to do what he tells them. Oh, that's great. Thank you. OK. Um, Yeah, you know, they're only, they only have in their scope of work coming to Northampton a set number of times, and it's, it has been pre-scheduled on either the days these forums have been scheduled mm -hmm. or to meet with the bike pen mm -hmm. subcommittee. So we really are going to be shoehorned into their schedule. Just be prepared for that. That was something that would be very clear to us. agenda is um, a, a continuation of our what we started last last time we met which is uh, well actually we didn't start this conversation but we decided that we were going to brainstorm 
over the time we are away what our mission, the scope of our mission as this commission is, is and our work. So to jumpstart that, I drafted something. And we can pull that up. I can tear in copies for everybody. And what I did, um, as I explained, is I, I took inspiration from, I, I've, I've read most of the, this charter revision that the mayor did, and I read, I read most of the um, descriptions of various commissions, and the one that I liked the most was the description of the um, Transportation and Parking Commission. And so I kind of modeled, modeled our description off, off of that. I really like the language that you selected, Lily, and I like the meeting format. Yeah, I do too. Um, say, you know, we advise and assist the tree warden and the mayor, uh, given how much outreach we've had to other department heads and members of the uh, city of Northampton uh, community, should we just say, and, and other department's head that is needed or just kind of leave a little bit more opening to continue to work with Wayne and others and Terry and so. Do you have a spare pen? Uh, I have a pen. Oh, great. I'm feeling very penless at the moment. Okay, so what you're saying is in that second sentence where I say assist the tree warden and mayor, the reason why I didn't go beyond that is because, um, you know, the mayor's the head honcho, kind of buck stops there, and the tree warden answers directly to the mayor. So I didn't, uh, you know, I... I personally didn't, I felt like that was it sort of contained all the most important members. I mean, if you, if you can think of language that, you know, other bodies and feel like go in there, show me, you know, just describe the language, I'm happy to see how it looks popped in there. You could extend the sentence that um, the commission reviews and makes recommendations on ordinance and zoning regulations related to trees, including advising other I don't know what word I mean, it's governmental bodies or I mean if you want to go in there. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I mean the mayor is a a kettle. Wondering if we want to include <coughs> beauty at all and why we want to ach achieve a tree canopy here. Could that fall under public health? Beauty? Um, it could. So, sometimes I just think it would. But. It could, you're right. Um, like beauty just for its own sake. Um, I think the three categories that are in here, though, are really driven by the types of plans or subsects of the plans, mm -hmm. whether it's the master plan or the transportation plan. Not, I certainly support the concept, but I, I, don't know, I don't know if that particular category would belong in a... Uh, Official mission, if you will. Well, I think on the survey, look, there were a large number of people that said that that was their goal for yeah. the um, Shade Tree Commission, beautification of the city. I could say so. I could say for achieving a tree canopy that is beautiful and supports Northampton's goals of. You could just put in. Northampton goals of public health, beautification, economic and community. Okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone does that work for all the people? Yeah. No. That works for me. Yeah. Okay. Great. It's the type of issues and reviews and input or tests. Line from the bottom. Yeah. I guess as 
every time it references trees or shade trees, I'd like to make sure it clarifies public shade trees. Um, I think it's a good zoning organization or zoning regulations related to trees, you know, you know, that can relate to subdivision control standards or or anything really, but public shade trees really is under our scope. You know, yeah. But didn't we? Did we? So we already have reviewed an ordinance. So. Yeah, that was for <laughs> that trees. was for private trees, right? That was the first one we did. Right? Yeah. But I the, get what you're saying now. But the comment really was that focus. I mean, our comment was that it's not really yeah. our, right. our, our role. Of that. It, it clarifying it has some value, and the public. So I think we got a couple of comments. Like, like, aren't you going to take care of this tree and that tree? Mm -hmm. the, they weren't public trees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's true. Right. right. Yeah, I had gotten a lot of phone calls. Yeah, exactly. People right. look at it and go, how can you let them cut down that 40 year old right. beach tree? Right. 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 Well, how about, I think we can maybe do both. I think in the first sentence, we can say protects and promotes city shade trees. Really all. But then when it comes down to what we specifically do, we can say public shade trees. Because there are times when we are going to want to weigh in on trees that are not, you know, just strictly public shade trees. I mean, we already have already, like we mentioned. So I would just hate for us to just, to, you know, narrow it so much that we boxed ourselves out of any input on, on trees that, Maybe park trees, or maybe. Um, I mean, that's that's public property. That's like park tree or library, or school school grounds. Are those considered public shade trees? Yeah, I mean, those are. I don't think by under Mass General Law they are. Public property. Public property, but they're not considered public shade tree. I don't have jurisdiction over them. Over those. No, we only have jurisdiction that the actual trustees of Forest Library grant me the ability to be responsible for the trees, just like the Parks Commission. So with these school trees, you go to the school or yeah. something and you say, can I do this? And each principal area school facility is responsible for their grounds. Really? Just the layers of... So we're not res stuff. responsible for those, but we are interested in acting as liaison. You know? right. Or advising. Sure. Or even when the Hospital Hill folks came to us and said, hey, this, these people are going to cut down all these trees to put in the newer development. You know, we could offer them, you know, we can't influence the, you know, it's not our responsibility, but certainly if somebody asked us for support or an opinion, mm -hmm. hey, don't cut down all those trees by a stream, you know, yeah, information, think, you know. I think there's a benefit to saying, like, facilitate discussions around issues of shade, shade trees, but I think making our mission to protect city trees or to talk about city trees, I, I think that's so broad um, that on our end, it could lead us to believe, yeah, we can talk about that. Um, I think it might be beneficial if somebody says, I've got a disagreement about this, and I've got a disagreement about that, then they can come to us and we can try to provide some information to get them to solve it without having any regulatory jurisdiction, but I don't think that, I guess there's a fine line between our regulatory jurisdiction in our sort of general public awareness and our role of getting people In reality, you don't have any regulatory jurisdiction. Right. right. That's true. You know, and the other thing too is yeah. that you're you're wading into so through me through me, you have yeah. the ability to give me advice about public shade trees. Right. I can either choose to take it or not take it. Okay. Nine times out of ten I'll probably take it, obviously yeah. because you're all very knowledgeable people. But I think you're also wading into uncharted waters a little bit when you are you really are responsible for Northampton's public shade trees, in a sense, indirectly, because of the fact that you are, we are going to embark on a process of actually working with the planning department to actually uh, change the way that you know we see how trees should be planted on public or on private property when uh, the planning board grants special permits, mm -hmm. site plan improvements. So I mean, it really is. Mm -hmm. There really is a lot of overlap because right now we don't have any jurisdiction over that, but in a sense the city does have some jurisdiction because there are ordinances that govern 
you know, how a person is supposed to leave private property after their construction is done, mm -hmm. providing it's over 2,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. So you're asking to be involved in possibly uh, changing that, updating it, mm -hmm. creating a different vision. So mm -hmm. you have to, it's not just about public shade right trees, it's not just about the yeah. trees and the yeah. tree belts, it's about the right. whole canopy and how we actually look at it as a community. And that's really where yeah. you really have a voice. I mean, I, I don't see you not having a voice in that, mm -hmm. um, in my okay. opinion. Right. right, and, and just, you know, reality check, it's an advisory voice, right? That's all it ever is. There's no right. jurisdiction right. here. So I don't think that we have to worry too much. Okay, so then, so the first sentence, by the way, is just is, is existing language. Like, I did not change that at all. So whether or not... Can, can I just ask a question about that? Do you think it would be worthwhile, for example, the way that the transportation and parking um, is established? Uh, transportation and Parking Commission of 11 members... Um, one of the things that when we did the interviews for all, all the folks here in the mayor's office, we tried to capture folks that lived in different wards. You know, and I don't know if we should make it a requirement, but it would be it, mm -hmm. it, it would be nice to have representation at the table from all parts of the city. So we were fortunate enough to have a mix of talented people that are here at the table that do live in different wards. Um, you know, I think that. It, I think it's just good to have a little bit of diversity. But I don't know if you want if you wanted to spell that out or you just wanted to leave it alone, you know. I don't know that it's been I don't think it's ever been spelled out like that in any other commission. And I think it narrows you quite a bit. Okay. I mean I think that's something that we can you know, the mayor can informally seek when he's and you know, that's part of the application okay. to identify what your ward you're in. But that would be um, that would be a major precedent to actually try to capture someone from all the different wards. And I think that it, it could really narrow the pool because you just might have some four really awesome, ready to go volunteers to be on the commission who happen to all live in Ward 6. Yeah. It's a small town. There just aren't that many volunteers. This is true. Do we say anything about pursuing funding? You know, we don't say anything like that. I mean, it's not like we're not going to do it, but there might be some benefit to saying that it's our. Right. Again, it would be kind of a precedent. No other commission actually is, I don't think it's in their charter language that they pursue funding. That's really a government job. I think that we assist, and I think that that... Yeah, technically we don't go fun. after it. Yeah. He's got to get all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> Just a public servant. <laughs> I don't have a badge. Shop security badge. We're gonna have to make you one. We're gonna have to make you one. Yeah. Three more than that. One. I'll, I'll get on that. Be good. He's coming up on his fiftieth birthday. We could throw him a warden party. Oh yeah. boy. That'd be kind of, that'd be kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fun. <laughs> All right. Um, any other changes here? So let me just clarify then. We're so far, the only change that I have made that I've heard from everybody that they're comfortable with is the addition of beautification to the list of our goals. Um, but I, 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 I think that Rich made a pretty good case that we shouldn't just strictly limit ourselves to public shade trees, at least in this paragraph, knowing that that is going to be 90% of what we do. Who's 90% of what you do? But, I mean, it's all about big picture. It's all about bringing all the other stuff that, mm -hmm. that is covered by different parts of this. You know, like our conversation with the mayor. Yeah. He, he was very receptive to the fact that we are wanting to draw basically all these departments in time together yeah. instead of working separately. And I think that's really important because it's not just about the trees and the tree level, it's about the trees that are going to get cut down that are protected by the significant tree ordinance and mm -hmm. uh, ones that are going to be planted in place of them. And, you know, we want to have a voice there. I just think it's kind of, you know, I think there's, it's important to have that voice, but it's also important not to have, to be overreaching. You can give advice and then allow these different governmental bodies to be the ones that are going to do the reaching into and uh, making either different developers or contractors play by the rules. Okay. So this is, gets sent to the mayor as a recommendation for an amendment? It would be. One, one more thing I just wanted to, to just bring to everyone's attention. I did not change the established part that set, up, set us up as a commission of seven members 
uh, and and you know we talked about the the, possi the possibility of getting people from different wards, but are we comfortable with there not be any specific designees from any other commissions, like the Planning Commission or the Council? I mean, Jay can speak to the previous committee, the way it was set up. It was required that there be a member from lots of different commissions on the tree committee, and that unfortunately resulted in some vacancies. Uh, not at first, but as time passed. And who knows, maybe there were other reasons for the vacancies, but did you feel that, that was helpful, Jay? I don't think it's necessary as long as we can find a way to get in the conversation with those people. Yeah, I, I agree. I think our, the next step in our kind of tour of inviting people in might be the chairs of these other mm. committees that we're going to be okay. interacting with. <coughs> okay, that's a good one. Can I make one request for a change? Um, this will be in the Next to the last sentence, works promote knowledge and awareness of the benefits of shade trees. Um, so I'd like to see if we could change it to awareness of the benefits of actively managing and protecting the city of shade trees, since we do a little bit more of a broad scope than understood. How about uh, benefits of an actively managed urban forest? Does that work for you? How do other people feel about that? Um, All right. Good. That's an improvement. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. A little tea for and then, and then one last piece is I just want to acknowledge that um, I also didn't change the number of members on this commission. You know, we've now been at this about a year. Do we feel like a commission of seven feels like the right number? Some commissions are nine, you know. I think more would be harder. I think we had nine before. I, I think this seems like a good size working group to me. Any objection? Are, are there commissions with less? It gets to be really hard to have a quorum. Mm -hmm. Right. There are, probably, but um, no, probably not. We always have an odd number. The I can't quorum imagine. number goes down. No. Um, not from seven, oddly enough, when you think about between seven and five, there's not that much trick because it's four or three for quorum, so right. you can have more people numbers wise. Right, so it doesn't help. Yeah. My only interest would be making sure that we have a quorum. Yeah. If numbers change, right. it could change. Okay, so everyone is fine with seven. Okay. Um, any other proposed changes before we ask for a motion to approve this? I move that we approve the, as with the amendments as discussed and written. Second. Discussion? In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Here we go. Woo! Good. Right. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Good to do track. A little bit ahead of time. Okay, so this conversation, um, the next next item on the agenda is the idea of us having a representative from the Trade Tree Commission on the Bicycle Pedestrian Subcommittee of the Transportation Parking Commission. Let's see how it hurts. And this was an invite directly from uh, White, since he basically runs the committee. Yeah. Yep. Do you know when they meet, how often they meet? They I meet, uh, is it Tuesday morning? They meet the, I can't know if it's members, the first or second. Um, I can pull it up, hold on a second. It's the second Tuesday. 7:30 a.m. a.m. Once a month. So the next, the next one is March 8th. So it's the Tuesday, and, and that's why it's um, Alta is scheduling this public forum on March 7th because they were combining it with having a public forum and then meeting um, the the committee the next morning. That's the next week. Yeah. So. 7:30. Um, 7:30. And hey, hey, listen. 
They're actually looking, there's a number, I went to the website, there's a whole number of vacancies on this commission right now. Uh, like almost all of them are, are, are up for the end of the term. So, um, you know, you don't have to go strictly as, you don't have to put your name in the hat strictly as a member of the, uh, if there are more than one of us around the table who want to join this committee, that would be terrific. Um, so I just want to put that out there. Yeah, there's two vacancies presently. And he, wasn't he looking for? He was looking for other representatives. He was looking for like um, underserved population, and mm -hmm. then I think maybe youth. I, I'd have to go back to the email, but um, yeah, here it is. Anyway, um, anyone around this table interested in can, being on this committee? I don't know if I could make all the meetings. I could make some of the meetings. Okay. Depends on the Monday night, right? <laughs> <laughs> Probably depends on the season and all right. other meetings that I have. I can't do that time of day. Okay, so Todd is interested. Jay, you think you could make some of the meetings? Um, would we like to... Okay, so that's great. Uh, I think that it would probably behoove us to vote on a um, an actual representative, and um, and then whoever you know, I, I, I don't want to make this a buying thing. So whoever is you know not our official representative is more than welcome to go unofficially. And I'm 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 not putting my name in the hat, but I'm definitely going to be um, attending these meetings. Are they open to the public? Yes. I was going to say the same thing. Well, I, mean, I can't commit to being a, a member, but I can go as often as possible. Great. Yeah. Great. Okay. So, um, do do either one of you feel like you want to go as the official representative, or does it matter to you? I don't know if it's possible for us to do a main alternate thing. I, no. And there might be times when I can't do it and you can't, or I don't know if mm. Wayne's open to that or how it would work, but certainly. I can ask. I can certainly ask. <clears throat> I think, uh, I'm just going to speak personally here. I think because this is, there's, there's a lot of design work that they're facing right now with, the, with this comprehensive plan, and you have an urban planning background, that I, I would love that, that perspective, that skill set at the table, just because I think it's a really helpful one. So, um, I mean, I, I would also love to have you there too, Jay. I think there are times when information that I would be able to provide would be good, but I think also you're very, you would have, I'm not opposed to you being on the that's what I was saying. <laughs> Equal non-opposition. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then I, I would like to nominate Todd to be on the um, to be our official representative to the bike pedestrian committee. And encourage more participation. Absolutely. And, and From everybody who wants to come. Because if these commissions meeting, at least the way this one's run, if we had people come and visit whether they can vote or not, isn't really key. I think it's it's the information people bring. Mm -hmm. I would have to try to make this meeting because the health of the group is going to be there too. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I have a nomination. I think to move it forward to an official vote, I, I need a second. Not to pressure anybody, but. I second. Okay. Discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. Great, thank you. And thank you, Jay, and Marilyn, and anyone else who can make these meetings, even occasionally. I, I, it feels exciting that we are finding our way, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and our, our voice is going to find a way to be, to be heard in the city a lot more, so that's, that feels good. Um, all right. Okay, J uh, Rich? Yes. Were you able to? Yes, I got some points. Okay. So next thing on our agenda is the Pleasant Street design. I kind of like that. Yeah.
Yeah. Oh, good question. The question was where the uh, bike pen sub came from. It's in Wayne's office. Great question. Right across the hall. Yeah, it's a little this bit of a tight. Wayne and I. <laughs> Your boxing gloves. You get it out, man. Yeah. All right. All right. Put on the pads. <laughs> The first motion, change the meeting. <laughs> well, it's pretty early. Actually, right? I really love the time that meeting. I could do, I could do our shape. I'm, not to, I'm a morning person too, but sometimes the classes that do the morning. Mm -hmm. It's nice going to work in there. I go to bed. Oh, well, let's go over and take a look. Now, before we go, yeah. aren't they 100% done? They are. Okay, so this is just free. 100% design. So, so wait a minute. Does 100% so mean that we have 0% chance of weighing in on them? Uh, I don't think you're going to be able to change much. That would be my guess at well, this well, point. I think, Rich, you were saying that the one thing you could do is recommend specific trees where there are wells. Is that right? Well, or is that even beyond? Well, it's already beyond. I think this part of this is. Part of the reason why yeah. to step up. Okay. Okay. So this was really designed. Actually, our engineering department actually worked with these folks. And so I did not see these plans until they were just, just about to be. What are all these? Those are all the, these are cluster plans. So here's Hakam Road. This is the limit of work. It starts from here and actually goes a little farther. So here's the. Dog ones? Are you me? So this is their key that they use. There's a possible well, there's a possible there is a possible to influence the tree selection, yeah. But that feels like such small fry compared to it is small fry. I don't think you're gonna be able to change what's designed here, but you might be able to have an impact on the tree. So this this is why this is why we're making a fuss. Correct. Well, this is this is good fodder for everybody to see why, right? This is yeah. Because okay, so this is Pleasant Street, and so you're going to have some staggered plantings along. This is like how many blocks? Is this one, two blocks? No, I don't know. What are some of the businesses? There are should be all there are residences. There's no businesses. Yeah. Oh. Should be a little bit scary. This is kind of thing to help us look. Yeah, trees. Yeah, to go into the beginning. But you know, that one's going to matter. There we go. Okay. Okay. So here's, here's, the, here's, the, here's the layout. So. so this is Manhattan. This is the laundromat. This is the courthouse. This is the train station. Oh, okay. So this is the zoomed in part of Correct. what we were just right. looking at. We were just looking at this. So section. we're looking out there because here there's no, there, there aren't trees. Just trying to get. So there are 26 trees proposed, and I think something like 20 of them. Are proposed. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
detail of what this stormwater infiltration is like. So this is what the stormwater, and these have been pretty successful We've used it in the city of Boston. This whole project right here is about $10,000 to make one of these. Yep, yep. So in order to dry well, captures water and holds it. Yep. Landor and I went to the whole meeting about, about creating wells for, for trees, and it's just it's not a way of it's a way of controlling water. It's right. a very weak way of getting trees. You get one little tree and it lasts just so long. So that's why you're gonna get one of these a lot of these smaller shade trees. You know, can we can we ask to change the detail, you know? Because like the detail, I mean none of these are like manufactured systems and you have to have a guy activate them or a gal activate them. But I mean obviously we don't want to have that as a detail as a finished installation, unless they've done a test. But like what that shows is the tree in the cage in the ground. You know? No, I don't I don't I don't anticipate that that's the way it's gonna be. I think mean, this is just a cut to show you what it's this how it's designed. Yeah. Obviously what's 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 this is uh, soil. structural soil. Oh okay. And okay. there's structural soil. Yep. Okay. Yep. And there's tree. And how many of these are proposed? Well, it's usually the front of the summary. All right, so we have our 100% design of our symbols. Where's the key? What's driving the redesign? Right, but so the new design is one piece point. That's That's correct. Right. 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 There was uh, monies available through grants to do this. So sheet number 12. Yeah. So it seems to me like a good use of our time would be to have some reactions and actually articulate our reactions to the plan. I mean, it's, it's too late to change the plan. Or maybe we should say, maybe we should say these are proposed changes we have and, and if there's any opportunity for them to be considered we would be grateful. If not, then um, these are our reactions from the perspective of you know the Shade Tree Commission. I just feel like we need to chime in on some kind of official way. Sorry, right, it's shade trees, Kusa dogwoods. Yeah. Well I can't uh, what do you right. think about Kusa Dogwood for a Tree, tree, tree. Is that because those are the stormwater? <coughs> yeah, they're under the stormwater. I mean, depends how big of a soil area they have. What, right. what can oh, they support? Yeah. But from a but from a bark damage yeah. point of view, like God, was you hit them three times with a lawnmower? They're dead. Well, yeah. Hopefully, you don't ever. Have them. No, no, I know, I know that. But we're talking a city. We're any talking, tree, you know, anybody. Any tree that's you know. you're going to damage. These are all these are all bio retention. Yeah, they've got a this great is, this is the bio retention. Oh, oh, this is, oh, this oh is, so no, we'll be able to put This is not a real shade tree. This, this, this is this, this is a dream. No, this is not. But these are. Mm -hmm. yeah, but these are these so these should be what, the shade trees. Can I just ask you what shade trees are in this design? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one one lemon plane tree. And uh, I don't know what you call it. Black, black gum. Hello. Uh, one black gum. Super long exactly. time to get big though. Those are really slick. Black gum. Black ones are really slick. Yeah. They're beautiful, beautiful, yeah. beautiful native yeah. trees, but they're super slow. Yeah, there's our these are All right. So I said black gum. Okay. So that's not going to provide pedestrians comfort. It's way, way in there. Right? Okay, so the Way black bomb is years away. recessed. Where's the one with my Oh, so the key for that one. This is, is all going to get repeated. PLA, so. And what are these here? Uh, perennials. Not on this page. No, there's so, perennials all. Uh, like what it will do is provide a nice fall color. Yeah, yeah. These, are, these are all, these are all red twigs. You're telling us, you're driving down here, that's quite a bit of red. You think, Jay, you're practically on Hockenham here. That has a Hockenham feel right there. I, I drive by this all, I do this town all the time, so I, that feels like you're already... I'm not opposed to putting a tree there, that's what I'm saying. There is not. I'm just saying from a shade tree perspective, that provides no, no shade tree for Pleasant Street. Where's the London planter? 
that's something that we get personal about, you know? It's just going to drive the cost up. I have no idea what their budget is. Yeah. And the thing is, is that where the darkened lines are, this is their limit of work for them. Gotcha. So they're going to stop right here. So you can see they're kind of marching along to another intersection where Kingsley Avenue is they redesigned this intersection. So yeah, he's saying take take this instead of just retaining it, you know, improve the well. Thing. You can, yeah. you can, you can make a change order. You can actually make a change order, or you can identify what two roads you want to change, and you can make a change order and figure out how much it's going to cost. But the question is, is that if you decide to put in these types of uh, infiltration galleys and these trees, then that's going to be yeah. driving the cost, and the money has to come. From but somewhere. the question is, what if it says on a four by four and then a four by six? That doesn't cost. It doesn't. It doesn't. The only problem is, is that, for example, right here, the sidewalk is so narrow. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in front of uh, Roberto's, right here, it's so narrow. You have ADA requirement problems. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think we're talking about stretching the long side, not making it into the side. Yeah, making. In reality, there should be no tree wall there, my opinion, because the sidewalk is just so tight, and there's a little stone wall in front of this building. Yeah. They just cut them in as they went way back when there was. So is this all going to be re no. redone? No. The no. sidewalk no. is no. not going to be untouched. It's just going to be torn. Okay. okay. So they're not going so, in there and tearing up the sidewalk. So it seems. I mean, just looking from a broad point of view, their main strategy for common traffic is these bumps, right? Um, and and what well, at least we learned from Joel in our conversations with Joel was that um, you know a tree line streets. Proved to have, and I don't know, I don't know how compared to, to bump house, but certainly he, he brought up the, the point that when you have a bike lane on um, on a street, an unprotected bike lane, it does no more to calm traffic and to protect the biker than if you had an, a, a, a street with no bike lane and trees on the other side. Well, I think it's pretty obvious with South Street. I think that those bike lanes don't really do, they don't do anything. Mm -hmm. People just drive like. There's nothing there. Right, they use them as passing lines. It's like they used to when there was just regular fog lines there. Exactly. So I think some of these that are existing trees aren't really there because. Correct, there's some because they have failed. So when we stopped our part, we made a uh, concerted effort not to replant this year in particular any trees downtown because of the nature of the ridiculous uh, ability to. Have them grow. Which reminds me of an important point that we learned from the mayor and Wayne when we had our meeting. And, and we can discuss this in a future meeting, but I'll just throw it out there now. There are no plans, plans to upgrade Main Street for at least 15 years. So we actually should consider turning our attention to, to, to retreating it the best we can in the short term. Mm -hmm. Well, those pits that I sent you, I sent you a new copy of uh, a pit that they can put in with a cement barrier and um, kind of gave a, a form to build around, but it was open on several sides so you could put structural soil in that and you could dig out an existing pit, yeah. stick one of these and put structural like soil in. Right. Was that over the top of the sidewalk? Or? I don't know what the cost was, yeah. but it, it's, it's just a concrete fixture. So in the ground or above the ground? You're describing in the ground. It's in the ground. Like completely enclosed? No, no, no. For the it's, it's like the two sides. I see. And it oh. would give you infiltration in okay. three, three directions, I think. Okay. Right. So, I mean, my I guess my question about this, just looking at big picture, is like, what is the cost of these? And, and are they giving us the bang for a buck in terms of traffic calming compared to spending the money to rewind. Well, let's say you had to get a sale as far as like... It has, but I guess it's just for but, but also, you yeah. know, the crossing makes people more secure when they're crossing because it's a short the visibility of people. Yeah. This is also raised. Mm -hmm. so, so I think for this plan, like, I think the thing that would make the most sense to maybe asking the bridge have the opportunity to review the planting list. You know, with, Change species. You know, because they haven't bought them yet. You know, and they're not going to buy them for a while. And there might be some opportunities to go through and put in there. Yeah. I mean, some of the, they do have a, like, appropriate, for the perennials they chose, they're appropriate for the soil condition, you know, for that area. They've got Joe Piley, and Joe Piley is, grows like 12 feet tall. Mm -hmm. That's what you're going to have in, like, yeah, that's like a, a, yeah. I mean, really. 
you know? It can grow really, really tall. That is a weird plant. That's, that's like a different plant in detail. They, they, they probably just pulled from one of the project. I mean, that would work if you had like a, you know, on the side of a parking lot where you have, you know, your parking lot's draining in, you have this big bioswale with large, but I would never put Joe Biden in that situation. What's what do you think of plant? Which something need to be Yeah, the, the plant choices for the the perennials anyway are really need to be looked at. Hmm. I mean I just I looked at that, I was like, whoa, what a maintenance sign yeah. Okay, but yeah. so, some some any other overall impressions? Because I really do feel like it would behoove us to put together a bulletin reaction. And and I can I I won't send this out until we review it, but I would just like to hear again the overarching reaction. You think we bump that up from four to six feet? Right. Would be helpful. Um, right. Anywhere where there's room. Anywhere this is room. this is the a tree planting area. Yeah. The cutouts because they I think they're just four by four because that's what concrete. Uh, Should be kind of six by yeah. sidewalk. Six wow. sidewalk. Basically, just four by six. Yeah. Instead of two foot sidewalk. Yeah. And then yeah. yeah. you specify where we want. The so any any other overarching thing like, gee, it would have been great to have shade along this avenue. <laughs> I mean, I really do feel like that there's it would be remiss not to say something that elemental to our mission, which is. Well, I think we can still get it. Well, that's where the you tree. Do? Different tree selection. Yeah, I think having Rich be really heavily involved in the final selection, I think that could get some of the shade you're looking for. But we're missing whole stretches but, of street that yeah. aren't getting any shade. Right, downtown. And I guess that's my point. It's like whenever there's an opportunity, whenever there's a redo of a street, yeah. um, we showed the seven minute video to Wayne and the mayor by this urban planner who just said, you know, like the first rule of planning is line things up. Like, you know, Shouldn't, shouldn't, isn't that a goal we should be uh, striving for when we redesign um, streets? Is to line trees up along them. But if they cut those boxes and make them bigger, I don't know how many they could do that don't have trees in them right now. And what that does is it gives us a better medium for planting in when we go back there. So, say, I don't know how many there are, like four or five, you know, we don't have to do that work. We could get something out of it so that we could put some nice shade trees in there. And then we don't have to hire a crew to go through and do the work. Sometimes, if you catch them in the morning and they don't have anything to do, you're like, hey, get that for me. Like, oh. Change order. You won't do it. <laughs> so, I, you I, can I, operate, I think, under other rules. <laughs> um, um, this, I would, somewhere there's probably a list of compatible trees with the, with the system. With the storms, correct. Why? The system is a patent. Right, right. But I just want to point something out to you: that these trees are proposed new tree plantings. There are no trees here, and they are not going to have um, structural soil. These are going to be bare, be planted in, in the ground uh, based upon the planting. And Okay, so, um, so there are some there are some trees that are here in places where they have never been trees, but this is not going to be done with the soil. So, so really what they're saying is this here is not going to be they're designing these to capture storm water. Mm -hmm. And obviously that's what they're designed to do. Mm -hmm. There's no there's going to be no storm water in here because you have uh, Proposed transition curve, and then you have a mm -hmm. proposed, uh, let me see, this has a retaining wall that already exists here. Proposed uh, granite curve with an eight inch reveal, so they're going to not serve any purpose mm -hmm. to capture storm water. They're right. just going to serve purpose for sure. Right. So, okay. so the, the ones that do capture storm water are these sort of engineered spaces. Correct. And we're now into a meeting of water retention, you know, or yeah, water meeting. It became pretty clear that those trees, even they're restricted in their size by the fact that they're in these boxes. But then they grow, and then at some point you have to take them out and clean the box out, and that's the end of the tree. So a 20 year life cycle. Yeah, so, so, so it's a short life cycle. So you don't really have a tree there. You just have sort of, it's just sort of a, 
a cover on a system like this. Yeah. That's what you get in sense. It's better than nothing. It's better than nothing, but from our point of view, there is any real effort to know which tree it is. It's the dog It's margin. From what we learned, it's the trees. In the plants. Yeah, in the green planters. Because, again, there's only 20 years. What? If you mill it and didn't pull them out, then the tree dies? No, the system doesn't function. The water doesn't function. Uh, right. In other words, if they have a light. Amelioration is so much. We're doing this, you know, because of our MS4 program part of this to remove pollutants from the system. It's usually why people are doing this to try to reduce the amount of also, stuff. Also, generally, they're pretty limited in size, the trees. And they want to take the tree out so much, but it gets really hard to take it out. It leaves it there too long and it means that. Wow. So it's really just, it's like a flower base. A nice one. We don't, uh, <laughs> think we want a lot of water. Well, that's what I was right. going to say. It's but like, why don't you just ignore it, let the tree grow big, and let the tree do what the tree does, which is absorb water. Then the, then the roots would leave. Yeah, it's not the way, these, uh, not not the, way the system is designed. I mean, yeah. We were discouraged. I mean, we yeah, went to meetings thinking, oh, we're going to learn a new technique. We're going to bring them. You, you did learn yeah. something for like. There is a benefit to it. Yeah, it's yeah. just you're not going to get a big, massive shade tree, but not every site needs a big shade tree. So my recommendation would be to uh, request that they actually do a landscape plan for every segment of the street. They've only done it for the intersection of uh, Huckenham and Pleasant. Mm -hmm. And I would say that uh, the landscape plan needs to be revised uh, to show uh, existing uh, street trees and their condition and identify which tree wells will be expanded and improved and which dead or dying trees will be replaced with new stock. Obviously we need to adjust the stock we don't, species. We don't protect the trees that aren't there, you know, yeah. like buying tree protection stuff. Yeah, if they're going to protect the stump, yeah. you know, great, but, um, and, uh, you know, the Kusa stuff is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and totally. they don't have landscape plans for any other segment, so it's really hard to to read the yeah. plan. Yeah. And they didn't do it because they're not planting perennials anywhere else, but you know, I would reclassify the landscape plan as a, uh, as a public shade tree plan and uh, mm -hmm. talk about areas for protection, enhancement, and all the new trees that are going there. And can we, as a group, decide that we release, or highly, highly recommend to whoever it is that they not go forward with this without listening to our recommendations? I mean, this is DOT. It's already a battleship. This is not a DOT project. This is a city project. This is the DOT at all? No, it's a pleasant street, so, you know, complete streets is. I just think having the before commission, and we don't like when trees are being dealt with, that's an issue that we can recommend. Well, we're recommending that they have risk. The problem is, is that I don't think you're going to be able to change. You're not, you will be able to change probably the tree species, obviously, but I think the design. I'm going into this assuming we can change nothing. But <laughs> if we don't say, yeah. if we don't give them an ideal of what this should have looked like, if no, did we drop the ball somewhere? Should we have no. been in on this? No, no, no you didn't drop the ball because this is the whole reason why we had that conversation two, uh, two weeks ago with the mayor and Wayne. Is this is because these type of plants get developed all the time. Yeah. And because we have never really had a tree warden and a functioning tree commission that actually reviews these types of things. There's no mechanism for anyone. Right, and what kind of firm yeah. designs them? Right. It usually they would know of. Oh, well, they, this this right. is the push and pull with right. en engineering. You know, we have a good bunch of engineers in DPW, but engineers are engineers. They're concerned about what's right here. Right. They're not. They, you know, they are concerned with what's, what's here, but it's ancillary. That's why North Street ended up with no trees. Just as a comment on like how we got here. So if it's 100 percent, it usually takes years to get there. So like you get like 25 percent and all these different yeah. benchmarks along yeah. the way. And yeah. sometimes like we're doing 25 percent review for projects. That are like six or seven years mm -hmm. down. That's, that, that's, that's one of the comments yeah. that happens. So yeah. doing. Mm -hmm. but, the, but it was put in front of you for review and comment. Yeah, it was in December. In, right, okay. Well, that's better than email. Full email box is better than So now we're well, advising you. Yeah. 
and hopefully you take some of our things under advisement and issue them in a, you know, scathing report. <laughs> right. <laughs> I guess I just want to make sure that the scathing report is approved by us all. Well, clearly. Okay, so here, here's what I, I need to do. I need for us to approve what, what we're saying. Uh, um, Jeff, can you tell me what the scope is? Well, Terry's the only one in the meeting. And I, and I feel like we, we actually need to to synthesize them, like a lot of things were said, but I don't know if that means that's what we all agree on. So I'll just mention a few of them. Um, one that Rich had the opportunity to review the planting plan. Um, Jen questions the selection of perennial plants. Um, that the tree planting cutouts be six by four or four by six instead of four by four. Uh, my comment is that there's just a general absence of shade trees on much of the proposed redo. Um, that we request, uh, Todd said we request uh, landscape plans for every segment of the street plan um, and that they be revised to show existing trees and their condition and that there be, um, and that there be an opportunity to make adjustments to the existing wells and to the tree stock that goes into those wells. Uh, let's see if I missed anything else. Um, you mentioned something about reclassifying landscape plans or renaming them as shade tree plans so that we're just clear on we're having a, Yeah, having all that shade tree data on one sheet. Having shade tree data on one sheet, okay. Meaning that like meaning a page it that really thing. pops out. You mean, you mean like a page that pops out that shows us exactly? Yeah, I mean, you could do it with the landscape plan. That's, that's, that's fine, but... Um, it should be like a landscape or a public shade tree slash landscape plan. Yeah. Which, you, which includes what's there already. Yeah, Stump, yeah, exactly. Stump, yeah. Which exactly living identifies. Yeah, that, that, right. it right. should say right. remove right. half dead right. whatever oh, and replace exactly. with X. Yeah. So for each exactly. one, an expand yeah. box from two Four. by two to four by six. So, so you would have like a plan like this that would actually either be segmented. Obviously, it on the size of the project. But yep. Instead of just having this end. You would have segments, like Todd had said, or you could have one overall plan that just shows the planting schematic and what's proposed and, and, existing. and what's oh, existing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you would have proposed and bold. And then just to make the kind of discussion we just had a lot easier. Well, it would be because you have to sit here and you have right. to play with it. Well, or, or the construction folks show right. up with their tree protection stuff. Oh yeah, the tree protection goes here. There's a stump. Yeah, right they put up the tree, yeah. tree protection in the hole and the public goes, wow, that's oh, great. Somebody, yeah. Somebody's yeah. really watching that. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> Should be. That could totally happen. Yeah. But you know, when you think about it, that's a labor. You know, so they've already probably budgeted for that, right? It's like five, eight hundred bucks. You know, so there's probably, you know, because you have a couple guys working materials and everything. So there's probably some wiggle room within the budget based upon protections that have been given that don't need to be given. So I mean, I'm curious, like, if we could play with the budget too. Okay. Um, any other items? Uh, any other overarching comments? Like, um, you know, while on while it seems like you know the addition of 26 street uh, trees along Pleasant Street would be a positive thing. We're troubled that they're all, you know, clustered in one area that's not going to provide a lot of pedestrian benefit. Right, it's really not yeah, such a great place in these if you're not going to do anything to fix mm -hmm. the soil situation. So I think actually that should probably be mentioned that, 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 that put that money yeah. into making those pits bigger and putting in bigger trees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, pits bigger and structuring the soil. Is that what you're saying? Well, there is structural soil. In the oh, yeah, but not. What well, you're coming here? There's no plan. Well, if you're not going to do that, then don't do anything. Put that money into something else. Well, we're not already not doing anything. You're not doing anything. Okay. They're not doing anything. No, but they are. They are. Some, they some are. of those trees. Yeah. Yeah. So here, so anything that has this large, where it says infiltration structures, details. This, these are the ones that have structural soil. Right. Right here. Yeah. So but, but, but here, is there going to replace trees down here? Are they? Are they replacing any trees? They were. Uh, there's a tree proposed right here. Uh, the other one, there's there. This is the existing tree. It's uh, oak. Yep. Okay. There's an existing tree right. Here. Well, there was one here. I believe this is going to be. Think there's some further down. There. Yeah. Yep. And there's a uh, there's a tree well here that's disappearing. Mm -hmm. There's a uh, protecting an existing tree here. That one's. Um, that one's not there though, right? Um, no, there is one there. Um, no, I was thinking the apple building. Uh, the 
half of that is on. Yeah, half of all these is That's the true one? Yeah. That it's disappearing? Yeah. There's no reason. It's disappearing. None. It's disappearing because of the nature of this. So, within the work of the limit, I think this is why. So, this one is not. You see how this curve cutout has changed? For some reason, they, they're taking this. No, they're going all the way over here. Oh, well, yes. HMA sidewalk. So, is that what they're adding? Is that what they're adding this one? Hot mix asphalt sidewalk. So is it for ease of access or is it for ADA? Stuff? No, it's probably from ADA. It has to do with the design. Well, I don't know the answer. This ADA is covering this. It's not covering way back here. It's for no, re no reason. There's a reason why it's covered. I don't know. I don't know. Well, maybe. maybe it's it's not. It's not. It's oh, not. You know why? You know why? Because this is the one that uh, there's absolutely no room between here and the edge of the uh, Roberto's. Oh, uh, well. That's why that's from, I don't. I agree with that because that tree is that's five times already. It's like a service barrier, you know, I think. It's nothing. It's gone. It's There's nothing in it. It's history. We have to wrap this up because we've got to get on to the next item on our agenda. But I, um, I, I will attempt to um, synthesize our, our comments um, and send them out to everybody. Um, and Andrew, you know, you talked about. Um, uh, different stages of a, of a plan like this being done 25%, 50%. I forget exactly. So, has, has, is, there, is there like an old number at which we really should be inserted into the conversation? Uh, uh, I think usually it's like before 80%. So, let's say between, let's say even 25 or 50%. Okay. Because once it gets pretty far down the road, it's. I'm going to say 25 <laughs> yeah, early on. I, you know, I just wanted to. I just no, want to be really clear. Yeah. That. Because then you'll. You, here's the other thing. Is you also. I was part of a redesign of, of a building, like a school building for a vocational area, and um, we, you know, we got in at 25, and then you, then you're notified when the meetings are. So you show up at the meeting, and they'll be like, "I didn't have a garage door." I'm like. How can you have a shop without a garage door? And they're like, ooh. You know, I'm like, no. You know, and every yeah. meeting I had to show up and say, yeah. put that garage door back yeah. in, put the garage yeah. door back in. Yeah. And I think finally got your garage door. door. Right. <laughs> hey, but you know what I mean? Like, because they'll just keep on going. Yeah. You know? But if you know early on, you can, yeah. you'll know when the meetings are. Mm -hmm. Thanks for going to get that. Rich. Well, we're not sure kind of that's one of those where you win as much as you can. Yeah. Exactly. That's well, and just the rabble rousing alone, I think, yeah. is will be um, somewhat effective. Lose the battle win the war. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Well, the, the sad thing is, though, that I remember the earliest public forum on this topic. The number one public comment that came out of that was, "We want trees." I remember is because they um, they sent this this um, like um, this, yeah they sent a sheet which zoomed out all the words that were most commonly used and trees was oh, the biggest yeah, one. Like the, the yeah. Thing. Exactly. yeah 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 they didn't, they didn't, they didn't yes, clearly six trees right <laughs> right I know okay um, Arbor Day I think that's the next thing on us yes excellent. All right. Can I give a quick update on the schools? I think I did to everybody, and that is just that all four of the elementary schools are, are game to um, take part in uh, some kind of a planting on their yep. campus. Yeah, and I'm just working with the school grounds foreman to identify locations to put the trees in. Great. I think that we need to start, um, we need to get a, a pretty, um, at this point, you know, we're like less than two months away. So a tight, a tight schedule for like what we need to do by when, or this will all be like right up against us very and shortly. What's the exact date, April? We're actually so um, news uh, update is that the schools are in session on our on Arbor Day. What, what day of the week? It's a Friday. It's the 29th. Good. The 29th. So we were gonna remember we had talked about the last meeting about having the following Monday. We're gonna yes. have it on the 20th. Okay. Um, so that, I hope, just a quick show of hands of folks who could uh, make it yeah. to a planting I on the tournament. I think I'll be able to make it. I think our stuff's all going to be earlier. One, two, three, four. Four of us. What, what day? It's a Friday. Friday. It's Friday. Yeah. I don't know if you've well, got something going on in the city. It's the 29th. Is it right? 
29th of April. Yeah. What, what time? You know, I, I imagine we're going to have to do this staggered throughout the day, right? When? I don't know. We haven't figured out those details. I feel like we got to start getting the like you know I the details it, hammered. I out. think what's what's important is that we we obviously have Greg and uh, Greg Lily. We have we have the uh, web distribution and school planning, which is going to require <coughs> people to rotate and do different things. Is um, web distribution usually Friday and Saturday? Or it's or been Friday. Last, last year we did it Friday and Saturday. The year before, yes, and we did it in front of city hall, which I yeah. thought was successful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thought we could continue that tradition unless someone has an objection to it. The, the plantings at the schools, I think, once I figure out what the locations are, then I've got to figure out, um, you know, how many plantings a school can do. And multiple yeah. trees per Well, school. you know, they're, they're, the, the whips or the um, growback trees are so small that if we could do two, it all depends. That, I think, depends upon the time frame of the students and what, how many students will be made available? What yeah, so, so what I've told the principals is I will, is that you're going to coordinate with Raleigh about the locations, the number, and the type of trees. Correct. And that um, I've told them, reach out to your classes and find me one or two classes, I think I said maybe two or three, that want to participate. I, I couldn't imagine that we're going to be able to plant more than two or three classes, uh, sorry, trees per school. And so, uh, it's just, I think it's frustrating for children to be just standing around watching something. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to bring in that many kids. I so. don't think it makes sense. I don't think, like, for example, Jackson Street School, you're going to be, there's a lot of trees at Jackson mm -hmm. Street. That's probably the most heavily populated. But there's already places I know where trees have been cut down at the individual schools this past year because they died in the fire. It would be good places to replace them. So I, I feel like we need a little subcommittee on this portion of Arbor Day. It just feels like it's this like... Is, well, um, I had volunteered to organize it, so... I All right, well then I'm... wanted to give a, just a synopsis of okay. what my understanding so far, what we have talked about and agreed upon. Um, and if there's any change with this, let me know. But I thought that we were going to do plantings, handing out whips, and perhaps a uh, event co-coordinated with Smith. We're having so, a speaker come, but... It will be the 22nd or 3rd. It's not going to be on Arbor Day. It's not going to be on that particular day. Mm -hmm. Is it related to trees? Yeah. It's, uh, uh, I forget her exact title, but she's in charge of... Uh, I'll, get, I'll send you the information. On the day. I meant to bring it today, but I got sidetracked in the middle of that. So on that Friday and Saturday, the 29th and the 30th, we're going to do the handing out of the whips at City Hall. Mm -hmm. And then concurrent on that Friday, we're going to do tree plantings at these four elementary schools. So is there anything else that we want to add to either of those days or that um, Friday? We have, we're doing both? we have the materials for ash tree tagging, but if yeah. it feels too much, like, too, like just too many balls in the air, we can do that any time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could, or, we could actually do a different volunteer day for that. This feels like a lot to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about handing these out at City Hall on the whips? It's not a handout yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, you're, you're identifying ash trees and then, and then putting them up. So I don't think the average you know, pedestrian walking by is going to be able to identify an, an ash tree and put it up. I think it's more about, like, we combine it with an educational. Mm -hmm. Do you a youth reach out, you know, Boy Scout thing, mm -hmm. Girl Scout thing? Mm -hmm. anyway, I agree just, that I, I think it would be too stretched to do the ash tagging on the same day. Yeah, with the ash tagging, you have to move around, which yeah. is a whole other problem, because yeah. they're not all easily clustered up. So. Plus, later in the season, we felt yeah. Way. <laughs> Way we go. I have a hard time. Yeah. I know. Right. Field of work. I know. Yeah. We don't need Jay to walk around with us. <laughs> 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 Garbage. <laughs> do you want to give an update yeah. on that, the tags that you've got, Lily? Um, I'll just, I think I had some samples somewhere. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah. it's a box. It's not that many. I asked for a ton, and they gave me like 15 or something. Yeah, they but, gave like 10 to 20. Yeah, maybe that's even. They gave you, they gave you 150 percent. Oh, well, well I, that was an estimate. I didn't right. count. How many of those do you have? I, you know, I don't know. Roughly. Um, you just 10 and 15. Oh, okay, not yeah. many. Okay, not, not many. a lot. Not a lot. It comes with, you know, educational right. pamphlet, two, two educational pamphlets, and a sign that you actually put on a tree to raise awareness. And of course, you know, no, this has not been identified yet in Northampton, but it's good to get people thinking. We're going to do that on the campus. Also. I don't know, but if not, I'm sure we can figure that out. So, uh, we'll, we would be putting these on public day trees. Uh, 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 I mean, I know where there are a couple. Yeah, yeah. 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 all over the place. They're all over the place. They're all in the neighborhood. In the neighborhood, yeah. I can give up. Very brief. Yeah. Oh, you are? Cool. Todd had suggested something last meeting about tree art, like the ice sculptures of Tom. Yeah, so it's hard to organize a yeah. tree art in downtown. Uh, so I've reached out actually to, to a bunch of folks that, um, you know, we're getting up against it time-wise. Um, I um, have focused in on one artist in particular who uh, we're exchanging uh, voice messages. Uh, so I'm just going to email them uh, probably tomorrow and set up a, a coffee meeting to see if there's any interest. The original idea is, you know, was to have something take place in the gaps mm -hmm. where there should be a tree downtown but is not mm -hmm. uh, and that that should happen sometime around an arts night out event just to raise awareness of you know, what we're missing mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure we're going to get there this year but it could be something we work on for the future but if we just maybe do one Mm -hmm. um, we may have your one. Okay. And that is, remember the cedar chest reached out to you? Yeah. <clears throat> do, you wanna, do you want to talk about that? Sure. Cedar chest is right in front of Thorn, so like the most visible spot in downtown. There's a, there's a vacant tree pit right there. Mm -hmm. And they approached Rich um, and asked if they could fundraise to buy a tree to replace what's there. And, you know, and promote like, I don't know, every purchase you make to Cedar Chest, X percent will go toward, the, the, toward replacing that tree. And then they wanted to actually take part in the planting and have a little bit of a photo op come out of it. Can I borrow my pen back just to <laughs> sure. Does anyone else, else have a spare pen? Oh, I forgot to put pens today. What about, um, and we could probably provide them with the, how about fundraising to be able to rip up the sidewalk and put, in put the structural, piece. yeah, put structural soil underneath, like we'll give them the tree, you know, Whoa. and if they can raise the money to change the, I mean, you could do a whole educational thing about that, about Why this is what really, that's right, this is what really needs to happen is we need to rip up four squares of sidewalk, put down some structural soil, plant the tree in structural soil and... They were hoping that all of this could happen by Earth Day. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> which, is so, also, which is the same time. Which is pretty right. close. It's, it's like a week before or something like that. Because um, they wanted to highlight a new product of some kind that was not as toxic as the <laughs> <laughs> Right. Degrees less toxic. Um, so, Rich, did you ever reply to the woman? No, I will reply to her because the way that they were going to do it is that they're if they're going to buy a tree and plant it there, it's going to be a gift. We're going to go in front of the city council, so we have to do something a little different. So what about the the idea that Jen had? Jen had the idea that they fundraise for the cost of preparing the space for the tree. But and they would be very surprised to find out how that costs. Hey, you know, and then and that we actually provide the tree and we plant the tree. <laughs> well, I mean, you can just. I mean, if we this is part it. of edu well, it's just part of education. You know, what's the average life lifespan of a city street tree is seven years. So it, that's the average lifespan. Wow. Yeah. It's seven years. I thought it was longer than that. Oh. And you know, people don't understand that you put in, you know, pay five hundred bucks or two hundred fifty bucks for a really big, nice tree. Yeah. And then you watch it die for the next. That's correct. Years. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, some live longer than that, but that's the average. Right, that's the average, yeah. given that a lot of them yeah, die. So it never comes to fruition. That's what, like, these, you know, lots yeah. of city plans 
Oh yeah, or parking lots, you know, big box parking lots. Yeah. Putting in all these trees. Well, yeah, all right. Now at downtown, looking at Strong Avenue, there is evidence that the locust trees, and even on Main Street, yeah. live, but it does create a monoculture if we keep going. So that's something that, you know, we I can think about. Trees. You, you right. love what? I love locust trees. I love, I, well, there's a couple, anyway, different topic, but I just well, want I, I just want to say, I just want to say that we are all talking about how we can't plant any trees because they die. But the, okay, there's two trees that would probably live. There are a couple, what, what's Sycamore, the other one? Sycamore. 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 Well, 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 I think it, I think in that we're holding back from planting downtown, and we now learn that it's 15 years before King mm -hmm. Street mm -hmm. is going to be planted. Main Street, yeah. Main Street. So maybe, maybe, we, maybe we plant uh, trees that destroy all the sidewalks and curves and stuff. That might Say it. If we planted trees that just <laughs> about <laughs> aggressive <laughs> roots, they'd have to do it like within five or ten years instead of 15 and 30, because 15 really means 30. Yeah. So you guys, before we wrap up on the Arbor Day discussion, um, I want to get a sense of how many volunteers we feel like we'll need. If we're going to do the, those two events in particular, the handing out of whips, that would be us on some type of rotating schedule over those two days. In terms of the schools, um, are people available on that Friday? And do we want to bring in volunteers from the city? Is that even possible? I think you for, know, for previous to come on to school meeting call? you asked for volunteers within this group and did you? And you got a whole bunch of them, did you? Did well, you? I was imagining we might have another event, but um, with just these two events. Right, I think I volunteered to hand out. I'm going to send around a doodle poll, actually. Oh, okay. Just to, um, I think last year would have been two hour shifts. I was really yeah. yeah, it was nice. Yeah, it was fun. Wait, you I'll do that again. Could you also include the public works employees? Uh, yeah, could you provide me their emails? Yeah. No, just, I'll just give you their names and then I'll, I'll fill it out for them. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a schedule. I'll do that for my employees. Yeah. I get where you're going. There's no volunteers in there. They have to, <laughs> no, they'll, they'll be fine. I just need it for like this, for like Saturdays. Mm -hmm. We're going to end up having more whips in on Saturdays. You just have to make sure that everyone's aware of what's going on. That's all. Is there anything else for Arbor Day that people want to see done? I would really like to find a way to get a tree in front of Cedar Chest. I think it would raise a lot of really neat publicity of a, of a you know, public business partnership. Well, this, this um, was the discussion I was trying to bring up, but yeah. you cut off. Was I, it, I, well, was she it, actually there, just said that there are trees that could potentially be planted there, and I just like to, I was trying to have that discussion, and now you're going back to it having cut me off. I point that out. I'm sorry, Rob. I did not mean to do that. Um, so do we feel that there, so I, in that vein, do we feel, and maybe you, Rich, you could speak to this most, um, that there is a species of tree that could survive in that existing spot? Oh yeah, it's nice if they survive. Why didn't we just kind of alter the tree well, I think, a little bit? I'm sure we could. I mean, there's it's a pretty hardy tree. The problem with the trees on Main Street is that if you plant small trees, you have problems because people tie bikes to them, they get dogs tied to them, and the next thing you know, the trees all die. Yeah, okay, but, wait, so but I, I think we got to stop planting redwoods or whatever the heck is planted downtown. That one's gone now, yeah. And, and we've and we got to protect them. Like we, we have to come up with a system to protect them. I mean, we, we are a sophisticated city. Truly, we can figure out you know, what other cities have done around the world to protect new shade trees in an urban environment. I think we got to... We just got to light. We got to. I think it's important for us to start doing it right, and mm -hmm. that gets into the whole you know line things up. And another idea I have, which we'll probably save for the next meeting, but we got to start doing stuff really right to show what it actually takes to reforest the city. Right. Not you know. Boop, 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 mm -hmm. okay. okay. So in that vein, then, uh, do you feel like it would be? Um, you know, we would be sort of getting ahead of ourselves by planting a tree with, by Arbor Day with the Cedar Chest. Not if they're willing to adopt it. I, I, I want to point out that we own a three inch locust trees, that I think are two to three inch, the ones that we have over at Amherst that are going to be dug this spring. Which, depending on if you count that as small, I guess pretty. I mean, if we can make a change to the, the, the curve <coughs> cut, or a change to the cut, and maybe, you know, improve the soil. 
they're willing to adopt it, you know. Well, well, just with the senior test, what kind of were they? The, what they were doing is they're proposing that for the month of uh, uh, March. <laughs> no, it's actually going to start. Uh, they're going to uh, profit from the sales of our new Origins product line. Uh, Origins bath and body products from April 1st to the 21st will go towards the purchase and installation of the new tree on Main Street. Purchase and installation. And the idea that they would like it installed on Earth Day, which is the week, the Friday before. And so the Arts Night Out is the what, second Friday? Yeah. Right, so it's before that. So conceivably, if we can pull all the parties together, if the artist is interested, if Cedar is on board, they could do something there, identifying that, allow Cedar Chess to participate in the Arts Land Out through this artist who is a member of the chamber, blah, blah, blah. And it could be a, could be a thing. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. Is it also possible you could ask them as a condition of the tree to put um, up like signs for the tree commission or advertising in their windows? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, is that something that is... I think like a sign on the tree would be interesting. I think the big thing of adopting it, getting them to agree to water it, I think that's a big thing. You know, because mm -hmm. I think that's a big part of keeping herbal trees alive is making sure somebody's committed to watering it. So if they're if they're willing to, you know, keep it alive, I think that's that's worth one of the signage. You know. So yeah. if we were to promote or Rich was promoted tree at Cedar Chest, which seems possible. I mean, if we have a locust tree that could go there and the locust might live. It, what about Yes Computer that had a tree that got destroyed and they want a tree? I mean, I know they want a tree. That's part of the test, but that will be a little different because that's part of the recommendation, recommended changes about fixing the existing tree wells while they're doing Pleasant Street. So there's no point in planting a tree in that existing tree well. And then we're going to turn around and say to the contractor or to the engineering firm, we want we want all the tree wells on right. Pleasant Street within the limits of work to be changed. So we're going to wait till correct. We find out when that would be. A, the okay, I'm listen. I'm going to have to. I'm aware that we have three minutes left of this meeting, and we barely like discussed the nitty gritty of Arbor Day. So I, I want us to try to like brain this in because we're going in all sorts of directions, and I take my part in. So um, Marilyn is trying is going to send a doodle poll to you know, get people to commit. I, I personally think that there's too much work here for just the people around this table. Either we have to drop some of the projects or we have to bring more people in. Two projects. Um, and well, no, no, three or four, depending on if we do the art and we do the tea. So it sounds something. like you're all over the art thing, right? Like you're uh, the I can handle the the art thing's a complicated mess. I can attempt to keep playing with personalities with that. Okay. But the thing we really need to cover is the plantings and the... And the it's a bonus. It's a right. bonus. So, yeah, the main, the main things are the school plantings, which takes some logistical planning. And the whip thing is like that self, that, you know, that's really... But we need people. Thing. You've got that. We need people, but it's a, it's a pretty easy project. But the school planting is a new thing. It involves lots of moving parts, including children and teak classrooms and you know, supplies, and so I, that's the one that I just feel like we gotta, we gotta get up, we gotta see that deadline and work backwards and have lots of short-term um, deadlines. What's the timing of, that the schools are allowing this to happen? Is it a certain? School day. It's just, so far all we've gotten down is, is that we're doing it during school Nine hours. Nine to three. Nine to three. Yeah. So How long do we anticipate the tree plantings to take? I would think no more than an hour. Depends on how many trees we have. So, so many trees, how many locations. My yeah. best guess is we probably ought to stick to two trees per school. So keep well, it real simple and then go from there. But that's something that we need to talk about further. What I did to keep kids entertained for the younger kids is we basically just had like a big pile of dirt and gave them the old gardening cups and they're in charge of like getting a scoop of dirt and throw it in the ball, you know. That was like how we gave littler kids something mm -hmm. to do without feeling like they weren't doing anything. That's a great idea. That didn't really how old are the kids that were yeah. Oh yeah. No, that's perfect. That's exactly because just yeah. kids feeling bored and, and not purposeful. Is, I just would love to avoid that. So, um, any other ideas you have on that? Um, okay. Uh, so, Marilyn, do you feel like there's anything else you need to cover before we wrap this meeting up? Well, since you reached out to the schools. Do you want to work together in terms of those details? Yeah, and especially with Rich, because Rich is really a big part of it, like the prep ahead of time. 
I'm trying to get a sense of timing and also, I mean, is the whole school going to pour out at a certain no. time? No, I think I think Lily's idea was to have one or two classrooms be involved. If we're going to do, if we're going to do, really what it should be, a classroom is going to sponsor a tree, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. One classroom, one tree. So if there's 25 kids in a class, then you got 25 cups, and then uh, 45 minutes later, another class comes out, and you plant the other tree. And then you move on to the next school, because we only have so much time in the day to move everybody around. We just get everything to where it has to be. Yeah. Already it's a lot. <laughs> well, it's a eight, lot. That would be eight hours of yeah. work, so you maybe need two di different teams moving around. Mm -hmm. yeah. so probably we mm -hmm. can do that. But yeah, I, it wouldn't I, have to be the same people doing all that. We also have the, you know, the public works staff to support, so mm -hmm. that's another you yeah, you know, where they could be most supportive is just getting everything really ready to go so the kids actually feel like they're planting the trees themselves. You know that you don't want Jimmy to be involved with the kids. <laughs> you know the kids. Is, the, is the mayor going to be there, too? Uh, the mayor has, uh, well, I have asked Cindy to leave an opening in his calendar. Just oh, do we? Time, so. Is there Corey issues? Like, do we have to, if we're going to be working on outside school grounds, do we have to... I don't, I, don't, I don't believe so. Corey, I don't know. we no. just won't ask. No, because I, I was never, I worked at school grounds forever, and they never report checked. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that's true. Go in, you do. Yeah. Okay, I'll ask. I'll ask. When I work at Williston, we all had to get the courage. All right. All right. Um, the to do list. All right. Very quickly. Let me know if I missed anything. This is what I captured. Um, on Monday, March 7th, uh, Jay and Todd are going to the uh, meeting for the uh, Bike Pet Committee at the Senior Center at 6.30, the public meeting. Um, Lily, you're going to email about 20 people from your list to participate in this meeting, uh, as well as reschedule with Pat. Uh, Rich is going to uh, draft or pull up an RFP at least uh, present a scope of work. Um, Lily's going to invite Alta to a future meeting. Uh, Andrew's going to generate questions for the Alta meeting. No, no. Later. <laughs> Later. No. Oh, sorry, did I? There was something in there. I thought you were going to ask for a minute. Um, Lily's going to uh, send the revised mission review to the mayor. Uh, Todd is going to go to the bike pit meeting. Are you going to talk with somebody about being the official tree commission representative? Uh, I'll pass that. I'll pass that information. You pass that. Okay. Yes. Um, Lily's going to send a list to us regarding the Pleasant Street we do. Uh, I'm going to create the doodle poll regarding the Arbor Day uh, volunteer work. Um, Jay, did you want to follow up with Smith about the event? I'm going to email everybody about the speaker. Okay, that, and that's on the 22nd. <coughs> All right. Uh, Jay's going to or, um, talk to Bob about the tree arts. There may be another event, too. I don't know. Okay. And who's doing what with the cedar chest? Um, I'm going to forward the email to Todd and William so they can review it. And then Which we'll have to come up with the game plan as to how we're going to approach this. Okay, yeah. To whom, and Lily? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. There's one more Arbor Day thing I'd like to just quickly mention. All right, we're over time here, Jim. <clears throat> I understand that. Uh, but the, uh, the chestnut, Smith is sponsoring the National Chestnut Society, New Grove, we have an acre plot of planted chestnuts. And there are 1,200 chestnuts to get planted that could use volunteers. Wow. So These are actual like whips? Um, or what I don't know if they're seeds or I think they're only giving away seeds. seeds that cost like four hundred bucks a pop. Yeah. Four hundred dollars um, per seed? Yeah, so you gotta like, join. Like engineer. Uh, preserve <coughs> the American Chestnut Society. So right. if we wanted to get volunteers involved, that would be Okay, can I also add that to the next week's meeting mm -hmm. agenda? Okay. Next week? Next week. Where's the acre? It's in Wayne. And the other thing I'm going to do is just uh, work with um, um, Rich in the regarding the school committees to nail down the details. Okay. 
All right, sorry to be over here, folks. With all that extra time we had, we managed to burn through it. <laughs> um, motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. Favor. Aye. 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 Okay. I borrowed somebody.